In this video, I'm going to explain how people can divide up the rent if a group of friends get together and rent an apartment or a house where the rooms in the house are different qualities, different sizes, people have different financial constraints, so in which case the prices of the rooms in the house should probably not be all equal because the quality of the rooms is not equal. How do you figure out how much each person should pay based on the quality of their room. And this is a real situation. This happened to me and two of my friends when we rented an apartment in graduate school and had to decide how to split up the rent. So I hope this is useful if you find yourself in a similar situation. Our situation was basically we, we found a space that we liked. There were three graduate students and three rooms. One of the rooms was clearly a master bedroom in this apartment. One of the rooms would have been like a kid's bedroom. And the third bedroom was basically um, they divided the what used to be the living room in half. And so your bedroom was half of the living room, and the living room was this tiny sliver of a living room. Both of them were really small, but clearly, originally, it had been a nice, comfortable sized living room, and half of that had been made into a bedroom, so that was the worst quality room. So it's not really fair for all three of those people to say, pay the same price, in which case, how do you divide up the price? And for us, we had already signed the lease, so we already knew we were going to pay $2,100 per month. And of course, this is way back in 2006, so prices have risen in Berkeley since then, if that sounds really cheap to you. But we needed to figure out how to divide up that rent. So let me explain it first, and then I'll put it on the whiteboard. So we knew we had to pay $2,100 to the landlord every month. So we decided each of us was going to submit a bid. And here's what that bid looked like. That bid was a breakdown of the price of each room that added up to $2,100, the price of the apartment, such that if we flipped a coin about which of those rooms we would get at the price we've bid, we would be indifferent between all three rooms. Let me write that up and then I'll explain it again. All right, so here were the bids. Um, so I bid 600. So here were the bids. I bid 600 for the small room, 700 for the medium room, 800 for the large room. And if you add this row up, this adds up to the total cost of our apartment. And the same with Anne's bids. She, she broke up the rooms differently, 450, 650, 1,000, and that added up to 2,100, as did Jane's bid. And we kind of knew from the beginning that I was going to have the small room, Anne was going to have the big room, Jane was going to have the middle room, um, but that was also reflected in the way we bid. So for Anne, she really, really didn't want the small room. She would for her, that would have to be really, really cheap at 450 for her to take the room that was half of the living room. Um, and she was willing to pay a little bit more for the large room. She knew she was willing to pay more, so she bid more for the larger room when she divided up the rent. For me, um, the large room would have to be pretty cheap for me to be able to afford that and even consider that. So for me, my bids are much more even. Like I'd pay 600 for the small, seven for the medium, 800 for the large. So going from the small to, to the medium to the large was less of a um, jump up for me. I didn't really care whether I was in a small room or large room and that's reflected based on my bid. And, and what this means for me is that if, you, if this was the price, of each of those rooms, you could um, randomly assign me to any of the rooms and I'd be like, okay, given, um, given the price of the room and the quality of the room, I'm indifferent between taking the large room for 800 and the small room for 600. For me, the large room is about worth 200 more per month than the small room, even though there's huge quality difference. For Anne, the bump up from the small room to the large room is is a huge bump up for her, so she's willing to pay a lot more for the large room. So that is reflected, our values for the different rooms are reflected in our bids, and our bids have to add up to 2100. So how do you figure out which person should end up in which room? Well, basically, um, you look at all the possible allocations of women to rooms. So me in the small, Anne in the medium, Jane in the large, 
me in the medium, Anne in the small, Jane in the large, you look at all the possible ones and you see when you add up the bid for each of those, so like if it's me and Jane, it'd be like 600, 650 plus 825 and that would give the total amount of money collected from the three people if we bid this amount. And you say which one of these adds up, which, which allocation of women to rooms adds up to the highest dollar amount. And that's going to optimize who should be in what room and it'll help us figure out how much they should pay, but we're not there yet. So um, when you do that and you look at these numbers, what you're going to find is that the maximum surplus or dollar amount devoted to the apartment is going to happen when we do this. And this was how we ended up allocating the rooms, me in the small room, Anne in the large room, Jane in the middle room. Now, of course, you can just look at those numbers and say, wait a second, I know those numbers do not add up exactly to 2100. So what's going on? Well, let's actually add up how much we would pay if each woman paid exactly this much. So we find that if each person paid that amount, we would be spending $23.25 on the apartment. Well, we don't need to spend that much. So we have a surplus, and that means we can divide that surplus among the three people in the house and reduce our rent below what we've bid. So let's calculate the surplus. The surplus is $225, which is $23.25. That's the total amount we would pay if we each paid what we bid, minus what we actually have to pay, $2,100. So we have $225 extra, dollars, which we can divide evenly among the three of us. And that leads to a $75 surplus. We can each subtract $75 from what we originally paid, and that's going to give us our final um, price that we will pay per month in a fair way of distributing these prices. So let's just write out the final prices. All right, the final prices are 525 for me, 650 for Jane, 925 for Anne for these respective rooms. And that's a fair way of distributing prices. It allocates people optimally to their rooms and of course economics is about allocating scarce resources. That's one of the definitions of economics, so it's not surprising that graduate students in economics wanted a fair way of doing this. We achieved a fair way of doing this, and I hope you find that useful.